the condenser. This is where we undo all of the uh, sensible and latent heat that we absorbed in the evaporator and dump it to the outside. So the condenser is located at the outlet of the compressor and it is the high side uh, pressure side of the system. Now the condensing temperature and that means the saturation temperature of the refrigerant in the condenser is determined by the high side pressure and th and then we get the subcooling at near the outlet of the condenser and we'll take a look at that we'll go through that uh, step by step subcooling is where we take the refrigerant that has been condensed from high temperature and pressure vapor down to high pressure liquid subcooling ensures that we have completely released all of the uh, sensible and latent heat and that we don't have any of the refrigerant boiling off before it hits the um, metering device. All right let's take a look at this system. We'll do a quick little review. <clears throat> Remember we have low pressure, low temperature gas vapor refrigerant coming into the compressor. It's, it has picked up all of the latent and sensible heat that it can from the evaporator. The compressor takes and compresses it into high pressure vapor. It still has all of that latent and sensible heat of, that uh, it picked up on the evaporator side but it is at a higher pressure and temperature now. So for the sake of this um, example we'll have 278 PSIG and if you could put a thermometer right at the outlet of the compressor right here you're going to have 278 PSIG and 200 degree Fahrenheit gas from in the, coming from the compressor. Now if you look at your pressure temperature chart that doesn't match up because remember the pressure temperature chart only deals with refrigerant that's in the saturated state where it's going to change from in this case uh, vapor to liquid. So at the outlet of the compressor we're we're gonna if if you could measure it you really can't you would have to it would measure 200 degrees right here on that refrigeration line. So as a, as the refrigerant exits the compressor and enters the condensing coil of the condensing unit. It is in the state of high pressure high temperature gas and what will happen is the fan motor blows the 95 degree air across the hot vapor and at a certain point in the um, condensing coil that ref hot, high pressure high temperature gas will start to release its latent heat and it's going to cha start changing state from gas to liquid and just like in the evaporator coil you know partially through this coil as it starts to condense back down it's going to be 25 percent it's going to be backwards from um, the condensing coil but it's going to be 75 percent liquid and 25 percent vapor and then theoretically halfway through then we're going to be 50 percent vapor 50% liquid. We're still saturated here. We're still on the pressure temperature chart. If you could measure each point of the condensing coil, you'll be able to read 125 degrees as long as it's changing state at 278 PSIG. It's always going to be 125 degrees. Then as we get down to a certain point of the coil, then it's going to be 2575. And then it's, at some point, it's going to be completely uh, changed state back to liquid and at that point any heat that is lost and rejected is now sensible heat so this is this is all liquid right here so we've dropped off the pressure temperature chart because we're not at saturation temperature anymore and we and it starts to reject uh, sensible heat so now we have gone from 125 down to 120, down to 110 degrees. 
and this sub that's called the subcooling process and that ensures that 100 percent liquid is returned back to the metering device which is right back down here now we'll go through this whole cycle uh, from start to finish after we get done with the pieces here so subcooling if you if you take your saturation you look at your saturation pressure and temperature these will match up on on the, the pressure temperature chart in your textbook and then you can me you measure the refrigeration line temperature as it ex exits the condenser you'll see on this example it's 110 so the subcooling of this system is 125 degrees the saturation temperature minus the line set temperature which is 110 degrees Fahrenheit or in this case 15 degrees of subcooling now just remember this is the confusing part once we have turned when we're all the way in the vapor state or all the way in the liquid state the pressure temperature chart does not apply once you you're in those states that pressure temperature chart only applies to where we are changing from vapor to liquid and or in the case of the evaporator coil liquid I'm sorry liquid to vapor all right so that's pretty much it in a nutshell watch this until you get it reference your pressure temperature chart uh, as you go through this make sure you understand where you're at in the refrigeration process when you're looking at the pressure temperature chart don't worry if you don't get it we'll put this all together when we get done so that is it for the condenser any questions uh, post it on the student forum and I'll make sure that I answer that completely and then we can all learn together